Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji here with my good buddy. Sean Cole. And today we have something quite different from our normal repertoire. And as some of you may know, Sean just had a trip to Dallas mm -hmm. for the iRace for Life seminar. And you ran into an old friend of mine, an old sim racing friend of mine. Yeah, Pat Dotson is his name. And I understand you guys kind of have a little bit of history that goes quite a ways back in sim racing. Yeah, Pat's been around since I started, as far as I know, and maybe even before that, back on Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii, if you're not familiar, was like the first online racing service through Papyrus. And Pat and I go way back. And I think Pat and I both ran in maybe Oscar in the Freedom Cup series. <laughs> and I remember Pat being a road course ringer. Uh huh. And all we could race back in the day was NASCAR. And it was usually Pat and I battling it out. Pat had a one-up on me for the most part too, unless he let me borrow one of his setups, because I remember he <laughs> set up the car really well. But yeah, Pat and I go way back. Uh, never met him in person, mm -hmm. but we go way back in sim racing lore. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, and even from my perspective, maybe not as much on track stuff, but he's got this Ultra Force GS4 G seat that we've known about practically since we started this show. And we've come across them here and there, but we've never had an opportunity to really try one out at and all. So you got to actually try it this yeah, time. Yeah, I got to meet Pat, talk to him all about him as a guy. I mean, he's a really nice guy. I mean, he used to BMX race. He used to do some go-karting. So, I mean, he's he's got the for real speed gene in him and he's been developing this seat for a long time. So now you got to sit down with him mm -hmm. and talk about this seat. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just hand it over to that interview so Pat can tell us all about the seat. And then when we come back, we'll find out what you thought about it. Perfect. All right. So I'm here at the iRace for Life seminar and I've seen so many cool people here, so many cool products, and that's one of the things that makes this so special. And right now with me, I have Pat Dotson of Ultra Force Simulations and his very fancy GS4 chair. Yes. I get that right? Yes. Awesome. How are you doing? Great. Cool. How it's, are you doing? I'm doing great. And you are one of the people that for a very long time I've known about. I've known about this chair and I very much have wanted to meet you, talk to you about the chair and even get to try it out myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very excited about today. <laughs> and this is definitely a very unique, very innovative product, unlike anything else. I mean, I, I don't think there's, there's nothing else I can think of that is anything like this. And, and I applaud you on that because uh, innovation is tough in this industry where I see a lot of copycats. So um, before we get to the chair, I want to talk to you a little bit about you. Sure. Uh, you've been in sim racing for a long time. When did, when did you actually start and how did you even find sim racing? Somebody gave me a three and a half inch floppy diskette with Indy 500 from Papyrus. Uh -huh. That was the start. Right. I never paid for it, so I'd like to apologize for that right now. Right. But I think I've paid for every sim that they've released since then. Right, so, so, so you go all the way back to the early 90s. All the way back. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you pretty much played every evolution of sim like the rest of us? Yes. Very cool. And and beyond sim racing, I mean, you have other kind of racing experience? I mean, uh, I, I mm -hmm. raced go-karts for about five years mm -hmm. and a little bit of autocross mm -hmm. and a little bit of seat time in a spec racer Ford. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so just out of curiosity, as somebody who's spent time in real life circumstances facing G-forces and things like that, when you got to sim racing, did you feel that it was missing something? So when you started developing this, do you think that there was a need or that you just kind of wanted something more? How, I mean, where was that transition? How did that come about? Sure, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was in sim racing for more than 10 years and it was my major hobby. And then, uh, at, at, then when I went into the go-karts, um, I did that for about five years and sort of quit sim racing altogether during that period. Coming out of the go-karts and going, trying to go back to sim racing, exactly, I was just missing the, the feedback that I'd gotten used to in the go-karts. And, and in looking at the market, there was just nothing available for me as a home you know, hobby uh, sim racer. There was nothing available to give me that feedback. Right. So that was, uh, you know, that was the beginnings of trying to figure out how could I, how could I do this on my own. Right. Yeah. So when did you start developing this officially? Well, uh, the idea occurred to me, I, I guess it was 2006, uh, driving in my car one day, just kind of paying attention to, as I um, went around corners and stepped on the gas and brake, what was I really feeling? 
and uh, and the answer was pressure as my body slid around in the seat and right. so and then I realized well maybe the key to this is not trying to be able to move myself around a room to create these forces it's creating something where I'm sitting still and I'm just having pressure applied right. to my body that was the inspiration and I set to work immediately and I'd say right. within two months had a had an operational prototype going. wow wow okay so maybe we've let the cat out of the bag a little bit I mean I don't know if you knew what we were looking at here so we'll get more to the very specific details would you consider this a motion sim I do I, it's not vibration based mm -hmm. like a like a transducer right there is motion going on now it's not um, the motion that you typically think of um, it, and it's not a motion platform uh, the seat itself is bolted down to a, a racing chassis, but there are pieces that actually move. Okay. So, I, I, in my opinion, that, that, that equates to motion. It is definitely mm -hmm. moving. That's mm -hmm. movement. Um, I, I'm going to try it out myself, but why don't you tell me a little bit of what the sensations that you get from that movement? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, why don't I take the cover off? And actually, we'll just, yeah, we'll let's just, check uh, it out. <laughs> yeah. So, this is the GS4, and uh, the basic principle is we have four movable panels. They're hinged so they can rotate the outer, outer edge of the each panel can rotate away from the seat. So uh, in practice what happens is if you step on the accelerator these two back rear panels roll forward like this and apply pressure to your back. Okay. Same as you'd feel in a, in a real car. Right. Uh, so you're actually feeling the outer edge is pressing like on your, exactly. your back and shoulder blades coming around you a little bit. Exactly. There are motors on the back and on the bottom of the seat that are connected to these panels that push, uh -huh. that, that, that pr provide that force. Right. So it gives you that sunk down in your seat feeling. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, same thing if you step on the brake these lower panels come, for come up and, uh, and apply pressure to the to the bottoms of your of your thighs okay. and, and create the same sort of effect. Okay. And then uh, when you're going into turns, then if you're going into a left turn, then these panels on the right will come up and apply pressure to the right side right. of your body, just as it would in a real car. So it's basically creating the pressure point that you expect from G-forces. Yes. I like it. I like that. In theory, that sounds really good. I mean, because that's... Mm -hmm. That's the sensation that you really get. I don't know how much we really feel the gravity. We feel the contact where we're being pressed into the seat or the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of, I mean, is there lag involved? Is it instantaneous? How does that play it's, out? It's relatively instantaneous. I Initially, when I first started showing this to people, I would always ask them, do they detect any lag mm -hmm. between what they're feeling in the seat and what's happening on the screen? And the, the answer's always been no. Mm -hmm. the, the servos respond in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, less than two tenths of a second, one of these panels can go from, uh, from zero to 60 degrees. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, it's very fast and, you, and, and, and it's essentially immediate. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, what controls it? There are two connections to the GS4. One is a power cable running to a wall outlet, and then the other is a USB cable running to the PC. Mm -hmm. And what is driving it is the actual G-forces that are being calculated in the simulation, whatever you're driving. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm, I'm continually, there's a piece of interface software that's continually monitoring lateral forces, longitudinal forces, and vertical forces. Right. And then the motion of these panels are uh, driven directly from those values. So ultimately it's the same type of process as we've seen it a few different motion sims here that are moving the seat around mm -hmm. or even a whole cockpit, but it's basically the exact same principles, but driving a different mechanism. Is exactly. that right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and what about compatibility with games? I mean, and we're here talking a lot about iRacing. Does mm -hmm. it work with other, other sims? It does. Uh, in, in addition to iRacing, it works with R Factor, R Factor 2, and then uh, all of the R Factor uh, based based <laughs> sims, yes, uh, Game Stock Car, uh -huh. Arca Sim Racing, right? And then all of the Sim Bin titles, uh, okay. earlier Sim Bin titles from GT Legends up through uh, Race 07 and all right. of the, the different flavors of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, another question. I, I mean, this might not be great for you, but my question is: You designed this. You went a certain route. Did you ever consider doing a typical motion sim? Is this something? I mean. When you went to the design phase, is this where you started or is this where you ended up, I guess, is the question. Uh, this is really where I started. I never made any serious effort at mm -hmm. building a motion 
uh, right. platform right. type of a simulator. Okay. Um, but I have tried various configurations in order to achieve the results that I get here. Right. And uh, based on all of the uh, attempts that I made, this was the best configuration. Okay. So okay. there's a lot of development work that, that has gone into this to right. get it to where it is. Right. Um, I have a lot of time and motion sy systems, and I do love them, but at the same time, they have their limitations, mm -hmm. areas that they can't necessarily give you some of the sensations you want. Mm -hmm. um, and everything in life might have lim limitations. This seems to have sort of cured some of those limitations because one of my gripes is in a motion system when, for example, I'm being given a long-term G-force that I'm actually being leaned a little bit. So this is kind of accomplishing that long-term G-force, but in the area that you constantly expect it. Exactly, and that is one of the strengths of a GC type of approach, is that sustained G if you're going through a long sweeping turn. These panels come up and just can stay up as long as they need mm -hmm. to be there. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a motion platform is going to tilt over and it's just going to set there and right. attempt to use the Earth's gravity right. uh, to, to simulate that. Right. But, um, it, it, in comparison, I'll just say in my opinion, in comparison, the amount of pressure that is applied by the, by the movement of the seat right. far exceeds anything you're going to feel from that tilting in a motion right. platform. Okay. Now, this is a, a Kirky seat that this is built into, essentially. Yes, Kirky Racing Fabrication. They make okay. all sorts of, of racing seats, and yeah. I've been uh, working with them really from the beginning. So what I, what I have here is, comes from Kirky Racing, but they produce a custom version of one of their seats that uh, they add the features that I need to install my hardware. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, how long does it take you to put one of these together? Uh, I've got um, iRacing Driver World Championship uh, on the oval side uh, driver, Josh Connors, working with me. Mm -hmm. And we can knock out several a day. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it looks quite a bit more sophisticated than uh, that. Is, <laughs> I'm just an assembly mm -hmm. alone. Well, I, I, my background is, is in uh, engineering. I'm uh -huh. a mechanical engineer, and so everything we, we designed over my years in the automotive industry right. had to be manufacturable. Right. And so that becomes even more critical to me, trying to build something on my own. I don't right. have a factory doing it. I'm doing this by myself. Right. And so I'm just continually streamlining that process. Okay. Um, I'm really impressed. I'm looking at this seat. It looks like a lot of stuff going on, a lot of expensive materials, so I hate to ask, how much is it? Uh, base price right now on the GS4 is uh, $1,775. Okay. You got a lot going on, so mm -hmm. I can see where uh, a lot of that is going. If somebody was interested, uh, you have a website? Yes, it's uh, ultraforcesim.com. That's one okay. word, ultraforcesim.com. Okay. And if they did order, uh, is this something you get out right away? Is there lead it's, time? I don't have... I, at the moment, I don't have them in stock. I hope to have them in stock for immediate shipment mm -hmm. soon. Um, worst case, we're looking at two to three weeks uh, to ship date. Okay, cool. Um, I guess my last question for you, this is a great product. Everyone else I talk to that develops products sort of always has like other things in mind. Is this uh, your only product? You have other stuff in the works? Uh, there are some other things coming, um, but I, not, nothing I'm necessarily ready to announce right now. Maybe next year? Definitely by next right. year. You'll know all about them by next year. <laughs> okay, cool. Fair enough. Pat, thank you very much for your time. It was thank great you, meeting you. Mm -hmm. Great to meet you too. Take your hobby to the next level with a quality racing rig that works great with a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PC. DT Omega Racing Simulator is compatible with a wide range of steering wheels including Logitech, Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and more. The GT Omega is available now worldwide by going to www.gtomegaracing.com. Welcome back to our look, first look, preview. We, can't, we didn't really review it because I didn't get to try it. Right. So 
Not that we don't trust Sean's word, because we do. Well, and some things take a little more than 15, 20 minutes to really review. And that's pretty much all you got with it. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more? Yeah, but still. It's, it's not enough. No, and, and even in that environment, it's not the right environment for us to be able to really compare notes as we're reviewing like we'd like. And this is the Ultra Force GS4 motion system. Mm -hmm. And again, this is from Pat Dotson, who's, like we mentioned, has been around in sim racing is longer, longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's, I'm gonna basically just interview Sean about it since I didn't get to go. And next year, I'm going to that seminar <laughs> because you got to hang out with some cool friends, old friends, yeah. new friends, and just look like a blast. So, Scion, I'm coming next year to be, I Race for Life. It'll be even bigger next year, too. So, first up, now is this considered like a motion, full motion system? I mean, how would you compare it to say like a D Box or? Frex, the Frex actuator system. I think that's a great first question because it is absolutely a motion system in that it's moving you. Um, but that's the difference. It's kind of moving you or, or creating movement, but it's not like movement like a motion system. I mean, it's kind of caught halfway in between. I mean, if you saw me in it, you would say, no, that's not a motion system. If you were driving it, you would say, oh, now that's a motion system. So let's talk a little bit about the setup. Mm -hmm. um, was it comfortable to sit in? Um, yeah, it was comfortable. And, and I, uh, admittedly, I was a little surprised because I thought it was going to be a little awkward even. Um, the padding of the, the goes over those plates so you don't actually feel it until it's moving. So you wouldn't even know. So before we get more into this, the Ultra Force, what was Pat like? Because I've, you know, I've only talked, actually I haven't talked to Pat directly in a long time. Right. Every once in a while we just kind of say hello, but... What's Pat like? Uh, I like Pat a lot. He's a really nice guy. He is a very opinionated person, but uh, we like that. <laughs> Do we know somebody else that's opinionated? We know a few people who are opinionated. Pat, you and I probably get along great, I, unless our opinions... Conflicted. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'd like to see that. No. <laughs> no, he was a really nice guy. He was a lot of fun to talk to, both on camera and off camera. And, you know, he's got, uh, he's been around a long time. So he's seen the good days, the bad days, and knows where we are in the industry today. Um, when it comes to his product, he definitely has a very strong opinion. And that puts him in a different camp than some of the other people in the industry. So there's some uh, difference of opinion for him and others. But I did like hanging out with Pat a lot. He's one of my favorite people to, to hang out with at the event. Cool. So let's go back to the Ultra Force G GS4 motion system. Uh-huh. And so... The G-C. G-C? G-Forces. That's, that's what, I mean, that's the best way to describe this thing. It is giving you G-Forces instead of motion. Sensation of yes. G-Forces. You're yes. not actually getting Gs out of it. So let's talk about how did it affect your driving experience? I mean, did... did you acclimate to it right away? Did, did it feel kind of funky? Did you have mm -hmm. to get used to it? What was that like? Uh, the first five minutes were clunky and, and it, it was me not even knowing or being able to, to comprehend what was going on. So was that you acclimating it to yes. it basically? Yes, yes. And then the other thing is that you can really dial it in. So like any other motion system, I mean, if you wanted more or less, you can make those adjustments when you get acclimated and you are working with your version of it. Um, over time, I started to really get calibrated with the movement. Acclimated. Acclimated. And the timing of the game. That's what's critical about any motion system. How is it timed with the game? So when you expect something to happen, is it in instantaneous with, with what you're seeing? And that was really important. It took a while for me to really get it synchronized, acclimated to that, that moment. And then it started to really come to life for me. What software is he using? He's got his own software and it, it works just like many other motion systems. It's taking the data from the game that's being output and it's turning it into uh, motion. Does it work with all sims or I know iRacing for sure. iRacing, I, all the R factor based sims. Uh, it works with some flight sims. So most, most things that support output. So most things that would support any motion sim or we did sim vibe recently, same sort of thing. As long as there are outputs for the software to capture, it'll work. Okay, so how does it come? We've driven the full motion sims quite a bit. Uh, CXC, the VRX, we've driven D-Box, not as much as we'd like, but we've, did, we've done some laps and some D-Box stuff. How does it compare to those? This provides something that no other motion sim I've ever driven has provided. Um, and, it, and, and I guess this could be a debate. We could have this on Opinion Nation about the, the usefulness of a full motion system or what it, are its drawbacks. 
this actually isn't plagued by one of the problems of the full motion. If you're going on a long corner and the sim moves, it doesn't feel right after a few seconds. It felt great when you made the movement. Because you're not, you're not sustaining that G load. Yes. And because this is applying pressure in areas, your expectation doesn't grow beyond pressure. So like, for example, when you get on the, the brakes in a car, you feel the seat belts. And it's like, it doesn't really come and go. It's just always there. So the same thing here, you're going around a corner and it's gonna give you some pressure on the bottom of your thigh and in your back, making it feel like you've made a left turn. And so, yeah, it, it's very interesting. It's so a does very it feel interesting like, feel. Does it feel like you're sustaining the Gs more than you would an emotion system? Yes. Because you're, you're getting that pressure, yes. the constant pressure? Yes, absolutely. Interesting. So Pat, when are you sending us one? Uh, we, I talked to him about that because I want to try it for real. So back to your question though, on the motion versus I could actually see them working together. I mean, that's over the top. I mean, you're talking just throwing money and money and money. But if you were to take this and some tactile feedback and a little bit of motion, you might be talking about a really overwhelming experience. That's what we want. Yes. So anything else before we wrap things up? Um, no, I mean, I'll just say that when I went into it, I looked at it, I thought it was a little awkward looking and I kind of sat down I don't want to say I didn't want to like it, but I sat down with some question marks going, am I going to like it? And I walked away saying, wow, this has a lot of ability. I don't know how it would feel for me long term, but I was I was pleasantly surprised and really enjoyed my time with the sim or the chair, the G sim, G force, GS4, GS4. Ultra Force GS4. So Pat, thanks so much for taking the time out to spend with Sean and tell us all about the Ultra Force GS4. Sorry I wasn't there to enjoy it as well. Hopefully. I'll get to meet you in person next year, or maybe you can come to the studio sometime. Or that, yeah. We gotta run into each other somehow, Pat. We've known each other for way too long, so. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed our Sean's first look at the Ultra Force Sim, and also like to thank Scion Alford for putting that whole iRace for Life uh, seminar together and have, you know giving us the ability to be there yeah. to capture such a cool. Putting so many people in one place. Yep. So that's gonna do it for Sean Cole. I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.